Welcome to the Curlander. We've been away for a little while, but now we're back. Where have we been? Well, I can't really get into that right now. Um, but what I can say is I might be responsible for the government shutdown. My guest tonight is a very, very talented writer and producer and director who runs Skitcom Productions. Dave Schweitzer is on the show. Let's do this thing, shall we? Last week, Alexander Rodriguez sued the MLB or the Major League Baseball Association and its commissioner for, and I quote, trying to destroy his reputation and career because that makes perfect sense. It's not the taking of illegal performance enhancing drugs. It's the organization who suspended you for when you tested positive for performance enhancing drugs. Just like it's not Wiley Coyote's fault for buying Acme products that blow up. It's that damn roadrunner. Chris and Bruce Jenner confirmed their split after months of speculation. Insiders at E! are reporting that this might be the highest season to date. But the real tragedy here is the family plastic surgeon who now has to pick a parent. At age 102, Vietnamese General Bo Gwen Gaip passed away. The ruthless communist general is famous for driving the French out of Vietnam and in an attempt to break French colonial rule, but what he's most famous for is his dead-on impression of Johnny Depp. In China, giant green hornets the size of a person's hand are breeding in alarming numbers that could be deadly to human beings. Yes, I know what you're thinking. At least this green hornet is still nowhere as bad as Seth Rogen's green hornet. There is a new article entitled, What's it like to survive a Syrian chemical attack? My guess would be not great. The rumors that the United States is planning to cut off military aid to Egypt is false, which means if America needs a place to crash due to the shutdown, Egypt still owes us one and they have a couch. A group of cryptozoologists called the Sasquatch Genome Project have compiled five years of video evidence that proved Bigfoot exists, in addition to providing a DNA sample. Wait a minute. First they did a story on green hornets and the government shutdown. Now, Bigfoot, my God, you know what this means. America has officially become a Stephen King novel. In related news, I will be going on a vacation with my family to take care of an old abandoned summer mansion up in Maine. That's right. I'll be miles and miles from where anyone can hear me scream. Chad Henderson has become the first person to sign up for Obamacare, which means he has the worst luck in the world because now he's known as that guy who shut down the government according to anyone who doesn't pay attention to the real news. A two-year-old in China has given birth to his own parasitic twin that was living in his stomach for the last two years. But the real question is, is there a birthday card for that and what does it say? I mean, happy birthday? To the one man who was literally sucking the life out of me, love your brother, Dad? An Ivy League student at Brown is furious at Fox News' Jesse Waters for reporting about an organized nudity week. Waters was described, and I quote, a creepy ambush stalker lunatic. And those are just the good things they said about him. I totally left out the swears he was called because we really don't have that much time on the show to cover that. Glenn Greenwald, the man responsible for releasing the identity of Edward Snowden, went on Newsnight with Kirsty Work last week, and it got awkward, especially when questions like, why should you be the arbiter about what is in the public interest and what is vital to national security? It is very possible that you actually, by your actions, make it easier for terrorists to understand how to evade all the checks that are made on them online. If you ask me, those sound less like discussion questions and more like flirt questions, Chrissy Work, you old tease. Riley Martin, a 21-year-old paraplegic, bungee jumped off a 170-foot bridge in Whistler, British Columbia in honor of disability awareness. In honor of National Breakdown Awareness Month, Miley Cyrus continues to set her family back hundreds of years and You'd think that'd be difficult with her father writing Achy Breaky Heart. It's not. Actress Mia Farrow is now claiming that her son, Ronan Farrow's biological father, is not Woody Allen, but in fact Frank Sinatra. 
which is obvious by his strong resemblance to the crooner based on her long on-again, off-again relationship with Sinatra. It is very believable. In a related story, Danny DeVito's kids are still stuck looking like their father. Empire Magazine named sci-fi fantasy actors Emma Watson and Benedict Cumberbatch the two sexiest people alive. But the real winner here are lonely nerds. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid called House Majority Leader John Boehner a coward in regards to how he handled the government shutdown. When responding to these allegations, Boehner countered with, Put him up, put him up. I'll fight you with one hand tied behind my back. Reed, I'll end this government shutdown right now. If you want, just do one thing. Talk me out of it. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Curlander. As you know, the government shutdown is all anyone has been talking about lately. One person whose views actually are getting some recognition is Representative Marlon Stutzman, the disgruntled gentleman from Indiana. Stutzman released a statement this week stating, we're not going to be disrespected. We have to get something out of this, and I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm so scared. We have to get something out of this, and I don't even know what that is? That sounds like something a villain from a cheesy action movie would say. Wait a minute. The government is shut down. No one is watching any political or historical buildings. <gasps> this is die hard. And as much as John Boehner wants to be Hans Gruber, he is totally Harry Ellis. You know, that really cocky guy who is trying to make a hero of himself. Then Alan Rickman shoots him while Bruce Willis listens. That brings us to a new segment of the show, the tirade. Okay, let's break down this. The government is shut down. Hornets are growing to the size of a fist. And Bigfoot may exist. That sounds bad, right? Of course. But if Bradley Cooper has taught me anything, there is a silver lining in this playbook of some sorts. First off, who has even heard of Marlon Stutzman? He sounds like a character Steve Martin would play in an 80s movie. Meet Marlon Stutzman. He's just your average Joe. Meet Marlon's crazy life when he becomes a representative. This summer, Steve Martin is Senator Grandpa. And another thing, no one is disrespecting you. We all respect your plight to a certain extent. But when that extent includes a crazy threat that ends it and I don't even know what that is. And I don't even know what that is. That's something a person says when pointing out a growth to a dermatologist, not something you say when making a statement to the press. Marlin, buddy, it's things like that that end political careers. Has no one ever told you the cautionary tale of Howard Dean? And all Howard Dean did was let out a pig squeal on stage. I wanna take back my comparison to Die Hard because that's an insult to Die Hard. This is more like an episode of the Brady Bunch. Mom, Dad, John shut down the government again. Also, we all know who that makes Boehner and B. Davis. In all seriousness, the government is shut down. Technically, right now, anyone could sneak in and overthrow us. And I don't know about you, but I really don't feel like watching Canadian Mounties roll in and America become a new province of Canada. Have we not learned anything from the events in the Patrick Swayze film Red Dawn? As much as I love screaming Wolverines at the top of my lungs, I can't live in the woods. There's bears in the woods. I'm not going to be able to fight bears and invading Mounties. I'm not Superman. So, to end this tirade, let me close with Marlin, my dear Stutzman. You aren't being disrespected. You, you are getting something out of this. So please, no more hilarious sound bites. They're just too much to handle. And there's no way I won't make fun of you for it. You have now become the Shemp Howard of the rep representatives. Although you're nowhere as bad as Curly Joe, you, sir, are no Curly. His blunders are timeless. Welcome back to The Curlander. My guest tonight is a wonderful writer, director, and producer. He has his own web series, 
It's called Fate to Reality, and it's off of Skitcom Productions. Hey, let me tell you something, buddy. You got a lot of nerve telling Sam here that I did a page one rewrite of your script. No, you, you kind of did. What I did was more of a proofread than it was a rewrite. Proof? Greg, didn't you say something about him recasting you in something? You did not. Well, I did because you did. <laughs> yeah, that's because I believe... Who called me four hours before he was supposed to start shooting and told me he couldn't make it? Was it you? Because I think it was you. And I had the location, I had the cast, I had the crew, I had the equipment. And guess what, buddy? You are not Robert De Niro, so I wasn't just going to shut down production because you weren't free. Well, yeah, I mean, so what? Sure, I'm not, I'm not raging bull Robert De Niro, but I think at, at the very best, I'm at least... Analyze that, Robert De Niro. Please tell me you just heard what he said. It's my good friend Dave Schweitzer. Hey, buddy, how are you doing? Great. How are you? Thank you for having good. me. This is so exciting. You and I have been friends for ever. Like uh, we're getting close to the ten-year mark. Yeah, and why? College. Why is this the first time you're on Curlander? Like this show's been going around for almost two years. I don't know. I've, I've watched the episodes. You know, <laughs> I've seen it, and uh, you know, I've I I would try to throw the blame on you and say I haven't been invited. No, but no, I've always invited you. You, you yeah, always it's... you always feel like. I'm shooting. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm busy. I have to go to a Comic Con or some random excuse yeah. of sorts. Oh, yes, so, that's right. You're yeah. going to Comic Con this weekend. I'm going to the New York City Comic Con yeah. this weekend. Yeah. Awesome. It'll be, Lucky you. It'll be fun. It's like the eighth year I've gone, though, so it's kind of lost some of the, the luster. But I go, and now I try to promote my show when I go, when I'm standing in line with nerds. Do, do you wear, like, the hat? The hat? The hat oh, and the sunglasses? No, you know what? I thought about that. I, I thought about coming on here tonight with the, the hat and the sunglasses. Thank you for not doing that. <laughs> I thought about coming on completely in character, and then I decided against it. So. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, why don't you explain to the audience what your show's about? The uh, show is uh, about... Um, <coughs> The show is about, well, I guess now it's about two characters. It used to kind of be about three characters, but uh, we, we just started the third season, and it's kind of changed a little bit. And um, so the show, uh, I'm in the show. Uh, I play an exaggerated version of myself, contrary to popular <laughs> belief right. of... Wink. Yeah, yeah, contrary to popular belief of, no, this is a documentary of your life, Dave. Um, yeah, so it follows me and mainly this other character played by Anna Rizzo, whose name is Sam in the show. And it's kind of our uh, misadventures in life uh, as two roommates who keep encountering pretty much the dumbest people imaginable um, as we continue to become dumber and dumber with pretty much every episode. <laughs> yeah, every, I I, you know that I watch the show religiously. I love that you do that. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I find it funny and I yeah. find it ridiculous. My favorite character um, is slowly becoming, like, I hate him, but I love him, is Cambridge. Oh, God. You know what? I am exactly the same. And he'll probably watch it. He'll probably be, like, the first person to watch this. But be like, what? Yeah. What? I mean, I hated it. I was editing uh, episode three of season three that just uh, came out recently. And um, I'm, like, editing it together. And I was, like, dying laughing at like his little like stuff and What's he doing like, Christopher Walken? If if you guys haven't seen the show, basically um it's in its third season and Dave's character is basic a. basically you're doing fade to reality in fade to reality. You're creating the T V show in the T V show. Yeah, to an extent it's I mean it's almost I mean I hate to compare it to this because it doesn't compare to it and also then people will realize how much we're stealing from it. But Seinfeld season four when they started making like the show about, about nothing, nothing. Yeah. we're making the web series that's the recycled jokes of Seinfeld. So that happens, but we take it a different different approach slightly. You know what's so. gonna happen now? Jerry Seinfeld's just gonna come in here and he's gonna like just attack me and be like you mentioned my show on your show. <laughs> you know what? Well, the more important question is, why are you watching my show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, the, there you go. And maybe you can get him to do a, a guest spot, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then you can be like, I got Jerry Seinfeld easier than I got you, Dave. So yeah. <laughs> some friend you are. <laughs> so um, basically, you have a movie that you've been working on for how many years? Um, more than I would care to publicly admit, but roughly like four I think I started writing the script in uh, 09, like February of 09. And we started shooting it in like May of 2010, I think. Yeah, in 2011, you showed me like 10 minutes of it. Oh, did I? Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, that was exciting. That kept you going for 
all these years. I was like, this like, is great. Can we go see Captain America now? <laughs> <laughs> I will go watch any movie other than this one, please. Um, but yeah, we just finished that up last week, and we had the first um, kind of private viewing of it, which was more just to make sure the DVD worked yeah. and that we didn't screw up that in the middle here. That would be amazing if that's cut. how film premieres worked. <laughs> We just want to make sure the digital copy works. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we're showing you World War Z. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, yeah, we, we just finished that, uh, and I'm trying to figure out what the next step is now that it's done. Um, I'm just so happy it's done, and people can stop asking me, hey, when's that movie going to be done? But would, would you go to, like, uh, Independent Film Festival Boston first and then go to, like, Sundance? Or? Um, yeah, I don't know our exact, uh, like, festival circuit. Uh, game plan. One of the producers on it, Guthrie Roy Hartford, the hardest working man in America, greatest too. Uh, he's really got a lot of experience with some like film festivals, so he's kind of looking into that to see what's coming up. Um, as much as we want to just enter like Sundance and be like, go big or go home. There's a bunch before that that will Sundance, probably be like, you South know, by Southwest. Yeah, it's a couple of those, you know. So we'll probably. We might start like a Gardner Mass Film Festival just so we can show our movie and then be like, and hey, nobody else in town made a movie. So what you should do is go to Fitchburg State University, yeah. the five-day film festival. <laughs> <laughs> just any. I love that idea. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are disqualified because it goes over eight minutes. But like they're, they're disqualified for many reasons. It goes over eight minutes. It took him four years, not five days. <laughs> That's that is key. And he's not a student here anymore. And we think he may have fallen behind on paying his student loans. So. <laughs> He's especially out now, but uh, <laughs> so I like that idea. Yeah, that that would be great. So, yeah. um, water break. Basically, what I want to know is, you're in season three. How many yeah. seasons are you going to go with Fade Reality? Um, well, it's not like set in stone. We're not like Breaking Bad, where we're like, well, after the seventh season or whatever, you know, that's our end game. Um, the Simpsons just renewed for a 26th season, and I want to beat The Simpsons. That'd, now, be, that'd be great. But I did yeah. notice that, going back to Breaking Bad, um, Sam did start wearing a lot of hoodies this season. Um, Very Jesse Pinkman. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't exactly watch Breaking Bad. I've gotten some of the SNL jokes about Breaking Bad, and I know who Jesse Pinkman is now, and I do know he's kind of a thug, and Sam's a thug. She's, yeah. you know... She's dangerous. Yeah, Anna does a great job on the show. Yeah, she does. She uh, she sh shows way more commitment than any sane person should, really. Cause, like, Are you she, saying she shows more commitment than you? Um, she has a longer commute to get to set, <laughs> so I kind of sometimes think so. I mean, uh, that does that kind of sways my opinion. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's she's hung in there. We've lost a cast member or two here or there. You know, a couple people that were a little more regular aren't quite in it, but she's still hanging out with us, which is very kind of her. Because yep. um, I don't think this is going to help her career. You probably <laughs> just hurt, realistically. I mean, you know. But uh, but we're we're grateful to have her to have somebody of that talent that we get for, you know, you know. Not are really, you hold are on. you actually paying her in peanuts like? In no, no. If she found out she could get peanuts from this, then I would I would be a broke man probably. <laughs> I assume. So no. Um, occasionally I'll buy like a pizza, <laughs> but occasionally I'll also forget my money and make her buy the pizza. So it's kind of something I used to do to Toad when we'd go to lunch, and then he's not really in season Wait, three a whole lot. Wait, you did that with me when we went to, yeah, when we went I, for sandwiches. Yeah, the old, the old, <laughs> oh, no, I forgot my, my debit book. card. I don't know where that could be, so uh, it works like a charm every you time. You got a large, man. Yeah, that you know what? Fair. Well, what you, you have to do is you have to order the food first and then realize you didn't bring your debit card yeah. and then make sure the person pays for you. So I don't even remember when that was. Was that when we were talking about... Adding on a TV show to Skitcom? Um, it could have been. I'm trying to remember. It, you think it was a sandwich I made you buy for me? I remember we went to a burger joint. I, we yeah. went to a burger I remember a pizza place. No. No, we went to that, that burger place. In oh, wait. Oh, Wild Willies? Yeah. 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 Should I have said their name? Do we have to pay them now or anything? Or do they pay you because we gave them free advertising? I don't know. I, I will look into that. Yeah. So, yeah. Knowing <laughs> no, now that I'm on an interview and telling everybody how bad I am for getting my debit card, it's I did this thing. I listened to Kramer from Seinfeld, full circle, and I got rid of my wallet. I said, I don't, I don't need this wallet. It's just bulking up my pockets. And um, it makes you forget things a lot. I'll tell you that much. So if there's a lesson to be learned here, uh, don't, don't get rid of a wallet. 
It doesn't work out that well. Yeah, no, not for me either. Yeah, not for, especially not for you. I don't even know if I paid you back from the theoretical no. sandwich. <laughs> that sounds like something I'd do. No. So, so uh, you're more like your character. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think so. Other people think so. The majority of people think so. So you know, um, I'm the one percent on that thinking <laughs> that <laughs> uh, that I'm not like that. People, uh, some people have said, I notice you play a nicer character on the show than in reality. Ouch! And that I, has to hurt. You know, that that hurts a little bit. But I'm I'm used to. I I stop listening to them after the third word, and you know, start right. just looking at their body or something like Does that. Does it become like like a Charlie Brown cartoon? You just hear. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, I would say it's it's pretty much like a Charlie Brown cartoon. The fact that I've listened to the words you've said for this long is that's like, amazing. Like a record. Thank you. Bravo. In fact, I'm very proud of. So before we run out of time, oh, we still have we still have plenty of time. But before we run out, um, what is the future for this season? Uh, well, this season we get to see how uh, the characters' web series goes. Um, uh, let's see what a couple of episodes coming up. We meet Sam Soulmate. That's going to be an episode. That's a Didn't big one. Did you tell me about that? Is it what I think it is? Um, I, I think I told you about it <laughs> um, because I think originally it there was, was potential that you were going to be the soulmate. Yeah. And then, not that I'm throwing blame on her, but she had this idea that changed it around a little bit and you, you you're kind of got totally, caught. I was on board for that. Yeah, you can't. If it's what I think it is? Yeah, you kind of got you got a little bamboozled. Is, no, that no. A, is that a PC term? I don't know for sure. Uh, if you have to censor it, I you apologize. Can say, you can say hoodwinked. Uh, you hoodwinked. got hoodwinked. Okay, we'll go with that one. You got hoodwinked. Bamboozled first. You, you know. Conned. Uh, you got conned. That, I liked that one. Um, so that that's one that's coming up. What else do we have coming up? Uh, Toad comes back this season, and he writes a book. Uh, there's a destination wedding. Wait, wait, wait. Toad writes a book. A Toad writes a book. If, if you guys haven't seen the show, you should go on, watch it. Brilliant show. Um, basically, Toad is not the sharpest tool in the shed. No. But, so, at but times, he wrote a book. He writes a book. And, um, yeah, and it, it becomes, uh, well, I don't want to spoil anything, but he writes a book, and it's a big deal. So, you know, that's Are we important. talking, like, Fifty Shades? Um, I don't. No, no, it's definitely not like Fifty Shades. We do talk about what the book's about, and I can't even explain it. We probably <laughs> wouldn't have enough time from what his book is about, but uh, that's one to keep an eye out for. Toad's a, everybody's favorite character. Everybody always tells me, Toad's my favorite character. Toad's my favorite character. And because they weren't saying, Dave, you are my favorite character, we got him out this season. <laughs> so now I have, I'm, I'm back in the running for a favorite character. So uh, Sam's my favorite character. She'll be out in season four. And then <laughs> season four is mainly just going to be a, a video blog of me reviewing Spider-Man comics. That'd be amazing. So, yeah, I, I'm the, it'll be amazing Spider-Man. You know, that's what we'll start off with. So it'll be, <laughs> it'll be really exciting, I think. Um, so basically, going back to the big uh, Sam finds her soulmate. Do yeah. you want to tell the audience what the original idea was? The original idea uh, involved Mr. Curland here. And um, I don't know how much of the idea you want me to tell no, because no, some of it you're kind of incorporating into a you thing. You came up with the, the you needed to see a therapist. Why don't you tell that and I'll... And just go ahead. I, th I think from what it was, uh, it was roughly that... Uh, we needed an episode uh, about Sam and her dating exploits, and she was going to start dating a character uh, that you would play, and uh, he was going to seem normal until, um, you know, he was supposed to be a child therapist. He was a child psychologist. Child psychologist, and then we learned that he, like, only talks through, like, a Muppet or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he has a puppet. Um, and it was a very funny idea. And then we based another show off of that. Yeah, and so, you, which I think is going to benefit even better, because yeah. instead of being in this one episode and then being like, hey, when do I get to be in another one? I mean, being like, it's hard to work X's back into the mix of things. You know how it goes. Uh, now you can just take that and, yeah, and run. Yeah, because I think the be original great, twist so. was you ended up becoming better friends with, like you got more attached than Sam did. Oh, is that what we had? Yeah, because okay. like I psychoanalyzed you in like oh, five Oh, I kind of remember that, yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's all coming back to me now, slowly but And surely. then that's how Scumbags came about. That was, yeah, that would be yeah. Scumbags. And yeah. then, um, yeah, which now you and Mr. Josh Schneider are, are taking We're and running with. We're working on it. Yeah, that'll be exciting. I'm looking forward to that. That'll be funny. Yeah. I'll start an interview show so I can have you guys on. <laughs> And pay you back, but you can like give me the runaround for a couple of years to pay yeah, me back. Yeah, that, well. that works perfect. Oh, fantastic! Fantastic! Excellent. 
So we are almost out of time. Almost out of time. Okay. Yeah, I told you I was going to be watching it. Yeah, I, I know. Time this whole thing. And that's good. I don't want to overstay my welcome. Oh, never. Of course not. Sometimes no. I do. No. But uh, basically, last minute things. What do you want to talk about in the last two minutes? Um, Anything you want to pitch? You know, I'm currently single, if any attractive girls have I mean, thought for that the show. Oh, the, for the show. Yeah. Uh, the character on the show is single, so if or, you're... Or the <laughs> website that they can go uh, to. Yeah, oh, I see what you mean now. Okay. So, uh, yeah, there's a couple places you can check us out on uh, online. And uh, the best source would probably be through our Facebook page, because we, we try to post every day, like one of the videos or something like that, so you can get caught up all there which is uh, facebook.com slash skitcom productions, S-K-I-T-C-O-M. It's like a sitcom, but it's short like a skit, hence a skitcom. But it's slowly becoming an actual sitcom. Yeah, it's kind of getting a little long this season. Uh, so we're kind of trying to reel it back a little bit. But uh, yes, uh, facebook.com slash skitcom productions. Also, skitcom.tv is a web address that brings you directly to our YouTube page. Um, I know it seems like a weird web address because it's not .com, but yep. um, yeah, skitcom.tv or skitcomproductions.com. Yeah, or WCAT.tv. WCAT. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's astounding. Oh, wow. Okay. So <laughs> I just explained Well, we are a TV station. Know. We are not a TV station. Yeah. Or even a TV show, really, so we kind of lied. But, um, but yeah, that is the, the, the places you can see us. You could always email either me at dave at skitcomproductions.com or info at skitcomproductions.com or uh, I think it's Anna at skitcomproductions.com. So pester her with some emails, especially creepy guys. That would be <laughs> ideal. So uh, just to give us material for future seasons maybe. But, um, but yeah, those are the places you can check us out. New episodes are released every Tuesday. Uh, this season goes, uh, new episodes are released until the... Tuesday before Thanksgiving. I don't know exact. I think that's like November 26 or something. something like that. So, um, and then, you know, we'll have a few months off, and then we'll be figuring out season four. But if you like us on Facebook, you'll get like all the updates and all like the stupid thoughts in our minds. You did it, man. You took it all the way to the end. Thank, thank you. you, pal. Thank hey, you thank so you. Much. I had a lot of fun. Thank oh, you so thank much. Thank you so much, Ben. All right, we will be right back after this. <laughs>